Did you hear what Matt Rule said about when he was sitting with Belichick? Uh -uh. He said Belichick spoke for four and a half hours on football. And he, he, he was like, I was so embarrassed. Because he was just making the complex stuff simple. Because guys like that, they learned the game, they ingested it, and they can bring it back out to where it makes sense. All these other guys are trying to speed through to become the, the next best coach and don't know how to coach. They know how to regurgitate what they heard at, at a clinic. Let's do these drills. Let's do these drills. Why are we doing these drills? All right, cool. Look, let's, let's do these cone joints. Why are we doing that? You can't even relate the drills to your scheme because you don't understand the scheme. Because when you was a player, you didn't read the playbook well. When you didn't play, you, you don't understand the X's and O's. So what's the philosophy of what y'all actually running? And, and you out here recruiting these kids who got these star rankings, but you, you, you know they play well, but do they play well in this system? What's going on, ballers? Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball podcast with Jonathan Jones. And this is where we all focus on helping student athletes succeed beyond their degree. All right. In this episode, we're doing something that we haven't done. Uh, not, I think I don't know if we've done it before. Actually, we bring in back a return guest uh, just because based on how our, con our conversation went last time, the things we talked about. And, you know, y'all tapping in, checking out the episode. So, man, we, we, we got to welcome back, you know, my, my guy, <laughs> Mr. Reggie Calhoun Jr. <laughs> What's up, man? What's, What's up, up, man? How you up? feeling? I'm feeling good, man. You know, yeah, man. To, I'm glad to be back. You know, I ain't never been invited back so fast. So, you know, this must have been a really good one the last time. So. Yeah, man. It, it was good. It was good. What's up? Yeah, because last time we talked about, you know, just a little bit about, a little bit about the media with Colorado. Talked a little bit about... Um, you know, the work that, that you do and have yeah. been doing, we talked about just the space of how people operate in terms of, well, talk about college. Yeah. What, yeah, college, yeah. what college really means, yeah. you know, yeah. and break it down yeah, and, and all that. Sense. But man, this time, man, a lot of stuff been happening lately, you know, as we're getting into like that summertime, people about to get ready to get out of school. Of course, football been out, basketball, March Madness is in. Man. Bro, the transfer portal is hot right now. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, um. That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the thing, right? It's yeah. almost like everybody wait for it like 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 Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's Christmas for some people and the ending for others. Oh. You know? Well, Christmas in July, like Harmark Harmark say when they do yeah, the man. video, yeah, they do Christmas you know? in July. Because what what I what I saw, I I looked and I saw um that I saw in twenty twenty two, I think it was the transfer portal had about twenty thousand plus student athletes. Yeah. This was just division one. Yeah. That's crazy, but do you know how many Division One athletes there are total? I mean, that's a that's a loaded question. It's, yeah, it's a lot of questions. That's like a lot of teams. So you have yeah. like I think like like over like eleven hundred teams in D one. Oh my god! So you got eleven hundred team averaging about fifteen teams per school. Yeah. So you, I mean, yeah, you do the math. Y'all do the math. <laughs> Y'all do the math on that. Ain't nobody yeah. Yeah. about to do that. We only do that type of math on their head when we talk yeah. about money, yeah. our money. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes, so yes, sir. Yeah, we're not getting it. But yeah, man. So like. If we if we really look at some of the stuff that we, we look at that I've seen the transfer portal like HVL going to the transfer portal. Yeah. Right. And I saw sources say, I saw one source say that she was paid three hundred thousand to go to LSU. If that was her going rate. But she earned it, right? As far as like value to the market, right? She I, she 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 went to what, Elite Eight? Mm. The previous year, and she was hooping. Yeah, she was averaging like what twenty points. She was hooping. so yeah. so so she had some value to a like a team, right? Um, the issue comes when people do the same thing and they see those sources, like I want to get that too. Yeah, but you don't have the same value as this person here. Huh. She averaged twenty. Yeah, went to the elite eight. Yeah, you didn't even play. Yeah, you registered. <laughs> Now you're trying to transfer. That's the craziest thing that I've... It doesn't make sense. Like, I want yeah. to transfer just because I can, right? So there's like a, a, a saying, like, uh, just because you can don't mean you should. That, that part. Right? That and part. It, and it's, it's one of those things where I, I want people to start being realistic because we all play the fantasy sports 
and we all been in a neighborhood where we pick teams, uh-huh. right? Yeah. Would you pick you? Mm. Realistically, like you line yourself up, or would you would you pick you if you know you got this people over here, you got this people over here, you know their their reputation, you know there's you're the new guy in the neighborhood. They're not picking you if you're the newest dude in the, in the neighborhood. You might get picked before the guy who they knew is super, super sorry. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you're still a new guy, so you're going to go after everybody else who are good yeah. gets picked. That's true. So it's like we, we don't take the simple rules that we grew up playing and apply it to the cottage space. It's the same rules, mm-hmm. right? Even on Fantasy Draft, you ain't about to go pick the – the third string QB as your first round draft pick. Mm-mm. You want to you want to win fantasy. Yeah, so you try sure. to get whoever can get you the most points. So mm-hmm. why would you pick them just because of what they once did back then? If they ain't doing nothing now, that like, is true. Like truth, 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 truth be told, you got and no no shade to to Cam, right? If Cam Newton gets reactivated now, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. fantasy draft starts in August, yeah. How many people are gonna pick Cam Newton over Bur- Bur- over Burrow mm. over Hertz? Mm. Right? Like, who gonna just say, you know what? I like Cam's podcast. <laughs> he was the MVP in 2015. Ooh, that's a lot of time. That let me sign him because of what he did nine years ago. Mm. Right? Versus, you know, Jalen Hurts and them did you go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's 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 that's, that's real different. Because I mean, I was listening to even when uh, I listened when he was on Shannon Sharp's recent like, like most recent interview, and Shannon Sharp was like, "All right, Cam, let's say there's a team that said that say they're ready to get you right now. Could you actually go and play?" He says, "I work out." Shannon Sharp says, "No, no, no. Are you game ready?" And then he then then he begins to share you know the story about Carolina. He put himself in a bad situation. Patriots put himself in a bad situation, which I commend him. I commend him on taking that ownership. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But also, like, there's a lot of other factors that that we got to consider. As you as a student athlete, there's a lot of factors you got to consider. And even I'll just take a step away from that realm of sports. You got to really consider and be real with yourself and understand that. If you pick up from one school and go to another one, we we not even considering credits. We not even consider moving. We not even consider the cost. Just be careful, man. Okay? That, that cost thing is deep, right? Because I just saw an article the other day. This this kid was getting thirty k to go play, and then somebody offered him eighty thousand to come play in California. Mm. The taxes, the um. living. Like the relocation costs, and I'm I'm saying to myself like nobody's sitting down saying you're going from third to eighty in your mind, cool. But yeah. you're also going from the middle of nowhere to Cali. Like, are are we not? You don't have to be that financially literate to understand you're going to a different state. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like you know where Beverly Hills is at. Yeah, for right? sure. So if you live in in a place that don't have a Beverly Hills. You have to think like, yo, this is, and, and I want an apartment. I want a high rise. A high rise in LA, and I'm only getting $50,000 more? Oh, okay. So what do you actually want? And that's what, that always makes me think like when they transfer, do they, do they really want money or do they want to play? But if they want to play, what do they do at their previous spot? to actually play that's a good point because that, that that was that was my question because I, I asked my guy ed jones because i was seeing this was before the transfer portal was really big but i was like ed why are these kids transferring like what is it is it because they're not playing is it because they don't get along with the coach like i couldn't understand what it was but then i started thinking about my time and i was like i would have definitely been the transfer portal but i was a guy who didn't actually play like that I mean, towards the end, you know, I was yeah. a little, little spark off the bench. Yeah. There was a game, you know, I got, I got a little 10 points. The coach the coach started talking to me different the next week. He was like, hey, how you feeling? Hey, you feeling good? I was like, yeah, I feel good, coach. You ain't never asked me that before. But, like, we got to really understand, like, why are they transferring? And for a lot of them, I think it's just a lot of different things that 
either they haven't vocalized or I don't know. What, 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 what do you think? Like just with what you what you've seen, like what, what, what would you what would you think that one of the biggest factors is for them transferring? Just want a new situation, start over yeah, type well, deal? I also think it's people around them too saying, man, you should tra- transfer. They're not they're not using you right. Mm, people will say it. And then they even at the school. But they but they watch these games for an hour, hour and a half. And they say, bro, they ain't using you right. Well, how should they use them? <laughs> and I get so, bro, I get so upset when I hear people say, he's in a bad scheme. Do you even know what the coach calling? <laughs> you sitting at home saying he don't fit that offense. Well, what offense are they running? What plays are they actually running? What was the scheme? When, they, when you watch this game, who were they playing why were they running that play against that team? Mm, that's a di- see, that's a that's a different situation because people don't they're not factoring that in. They just know that's my cousin and he better than them. He better than all of them. He, he at least he better than the rest of us from this neighborhood. So I don't know why he not better than them. I don't know. Because for instance, like in football, because I'm really like football focused. Let's say you got a kid who's really really good at playing zone. In, in, in defense. Mm-hmm. Your first two, three games, y'all going man focused because y'all want to blitz a lot. Mm. But he's really good at his own. Yeah. Do we put him in the game just to say he playing and put him in a bad position? Or do we say, you know what? Hey, look, this game, you're going to get a, a, a few reps on third down, passing downs when we, when we like drop down into the zone. Uh-huh. But for the majority of the game, for 60% of the game, we going, man, you're not a man guy. Not a, this package don't fit you. Because it's like if y'all really want to go to the pros, the, the pros have packages, person, mm-hmm. on personnel deal. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like people don't understand that. Like they would, they watch from home and think like, oh, well, JJ Watt plays every down. Well, go watch the games. No, mm. he doesn't. Mm. Bosa don't don't play every down. Mm-hmm. Like these dudes aren't playing every single play, but the play that they do play, they make impact. Mm. So if you're getting in and you like, man, I only got ten plays. And in them 10 plays, you grade out as an F. You probably won't get 10 more. So now you probably get seven next, next game. If that. And now you mad because you only got seven. And you ain't do well in them seven. So now the next game, they're going to get another shot. And they give you three. And in them three, you mad because you in. And you don't really want to be in on these plays. So you sabotage yourself. And now you don't play at all. You don't, you don't kick off on special teams. Hmm. And on that. You don't even do your job on that. Now we just take you off the depth chart. Now you now you just traveling. You just travel. And then somebody at home like, bro, you should be playing, dog. They ain't using you right. You should be getting way more than 10 plays a game. Well, should you? Right? And as a coach, I think we should be sitting down talking to the players like, hey, like, percentage-wise, you should be getting around this that's many reps so we get you acclimated into the system you know every week we grade you out this what you failed at this is what you gotta work on to get better at because in college if i tell you this what you gotta work on to, to get better it don't mean that's my job to help you do that though mm, i don't get say it I again don't, say it again i don't get paid as a position coach to develop you for the position we recruited you so obviously you have some sort of skills or some concept of why we brought you in, right? Mm-hmm. So if I say, yo, you need to work on this, this, and this, I'm thinking you know what that means. Wow. Because we brought you in. Your highlight, and this is why the highlight tape is so crazy. It's like your highlights show that you understand the concepts. Because you're making plays, you're um, you you're highly ranked, and this is that. So we bring you in, and then the first game, you lost. So as a coach, I'ma chalk it up to you knew. Well, after after a few weeks, 
you ain't new no more. Yeah. And I keep telling you, hey, you need to work on this. You need to get stronger over here. You need to uh, watch more film. Hey, you need to be in the weight room more. Yeah. If I don't see you in the weight room more, it's not my job to make sure you're in the weight room. My job is to coach you. I'm coaching you by saying, hey, you should be doing X, Y, Z. And as many times as you have these trainers in the summer, where are they during the season? Because mm. you only hit them up when it's time to look cool on the internet or you on break. But if I'm trying to get better, my trainer should be around. Or I should be consulting with them like, yo, my coach said I need to do this and this. You know, how can I get better at this if I want to get better? For sure. For sure. And then, I mean, even... Even at, even if it's not at the Division One level, right? At these other levels, there are grad assistants, there are other coaches, there are. I mean, if we're talking weight room, you got access to the weight room at any level, mm-hmm. right? I was Division Three JUCO. We had weight room. I mean, it was like a hotel type weight room. You know, nothing too, but we still could go in and get some work in. Yeah. Right. So you just gotta take the time and do those things. But just like what you're saying. But if you're trying to really get better and a coach tells you what you need to get better in, one, you should already know that. Like you should see it because if you're getting beat on this play and, you know, you're not comfortable reading coverages, you can either ask for access to film. Yeah. If you're Division One or some of these other divisions, you can sit in your individual position film room and watch film. And some of the programs, I mean, you know, they cut the film up for them. The, system, the technology is crazy. Like, it's like, hey, this defensive scripts, boom. And this is everything we did. This is our first down and 10 plays. This is our second down plays. Hey, this is our blitz period, period, period. This is how you looked at one-on-ones. This is how you looked at seven-on-sevens. This is how you looked at team. Like, just click and just watch yourself perform. And then they capture this in practice and the games. Oh, yeah, practice. You get a lot of film. You get to watch yourself a lot. Oh, wow. You, but a lot of these kids only go – and they only watch practice film. And they, so having a good memory is like, oh, I remember in one-on-one, I get that boy a crazy route. So when I, when I go watch film, I'm going to go find that play. For sure. Because football players are gifted, bro. Like, like we, well, at least I was and my teammates were. We knew what part of the day we made a good play. Oh, wow. So you go on the film, you can go straight to it. <laughs> like, you know, in seven on seven, play five, <laughs> I killed them. I'm going straight to play five. <laughs> you knew that. So, so when they turn the film on, they're only trying to go and look at what they did well. Because there's no way coach not playing me. Look at me, bro. I'm killing them. Yes. But practice was an hour and 15 minutes. Mm. You got 22 seconds. Oh, God. Of <laughs> greatness. Right? And, and, and then the hardest part of the portal is if they treated the portal, portal, portal how they treat uh, pre-draftees, nobody that gets signed. Talk more about that. Get me on the board. Hey, look, so why are you... Why you leave? Okay, not even pre-drafting. Let's take it to the jobs. Okay. Why are you leaving your your on your on your current job? Tell mm. me a time when you experienced X Y Z. Tell me a time when you faced blah blah blah, where you had to overcome. Because in the real world, there is no my boss hating on me, man. They ain't let me play. They ain't give me no reps. They ain't give me no shine, so I'm transferring to a new co- company. Because the interview is going to be like, yo, why are you leaving? What, mm. what is making you leave? Oh, you want more money. Mm. So tell me about a time when you did some, something where you, where you felt you deserved more financial gain. If we just want to just keep it level not no no being facetious just hey tell me about a time when you was at school and you felt you made a play that coach didn't recognize mm. oh well you know it was one time i i act like moth this guy or i dunked on on this guy cool what play y'all ran 
What was, what was your job on that play? Because sometimes you can make a great play doing the wrong thing. Like you could be in the wrong spot and get an interception. Mm. You could run the wrong pick and happen to get a rebound and throw it up and hit the game winner. Now you highlighting the fact that you had a game winner, but you ran the wrong play. That's why the shot was blocked. Mm. Because Buddy had to go up and do his thing and die some people and stuff, but you should have been, he shouldn't even have that traffic if you did your right job. Dang. But you got the ball, you shot it up, and, he, and you made it, and the game's over, and y'all won, and you want everybody to say, oh my God, you get the game winner. But then Coach watched, watched the film and was like, hey son, great shot, but you was in the great shot. A great coach is going to be like, hey man, good, good job, great, great pick, but we can't keep doing this because the next week they're going to see like, yo, he ain't never in the right spot. Mm. And that's why I, I like the portal because it's going to humble a lot of people because they're not ready for that business side. But I also think it exposes truly like what these kids haven't learned in high school. Oh, because you're trying to shop yourself around off of what you once did. So if 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 all if you're a freshman and all you have is your high school film, well, if I'm comparing high school to high school, I'm gonna go with the current high school. You're old now. You out you outdated. Mm -hmm. So so you no longer have that luxury of of saying I was once a college athlete and this is what I did. It's like, no, you are a high school kid who didn't transition well. So, so now there is no 300K for you to get no value. You ain't play. And the, and the my homeboy sent me some stats of a player who transferred and I, I looked at all his stats and I said, his two best games were the games they got blew out in, which means he played a lot in those games which means he didn't play a lot in the earlier games. Statistically, it just shows like your two best statistic games were the other games y'all blew out. Well, y'all got some smoke then. So if these are the last two games of the, of the year, y'all wasn't going to the playoffs, y'all was tucking it in, and they gave you some burn. So, do you really have that value? No. You can't say, well, look at these stats, man. I got like eight points in this game. That's your best game. And you only got them eight points because you happen to be in the game for a long time, which means you're not really productive. Because when they put you in the game, for show, for show, you didn't even have any production at all. And they gotta realize that's the next level. That's that's the next level. When he when he do start looking at stats and percentages mm -hmm. and and like impact and like trajectory and what you did, like they gonna start saying, "Hey, you six two, he's six two. You six three, he's six four. Okay, all of y'all can jump out the gym. Cool. All of y'all went JUCO. Cool. Y'all sing conference. Cool." Mm. I watched the film. You crossed him up. He crossed him up. Okay, bet. Statistically, though, every game he's averaging nine points. He's averaging 11. He's averaging 15. He's averaging 10. Okay, that's productive. But we looking for a defensive guy. This guy's averaging three steals a game. Mm. I want this guy. The portal going just I mean just what it is. The portal going portal, man. Portal going portal. It's gonna be bad for for people who don't understand how personnel work and teams work. You know, like it, it's the nature of the other uh, beast. We talk about like I need. What does a team need? Not what mm. you think you are. What does mm. what does a team need? Wow. The team don't don't need a five star athlete. The team needs somebody who can come and produce. 
whether that's a zero star, one star, five star, transfer guy, don't matter. All American, honorable mention, don't matter, bro. Can mm -hmm. this dude come and produce? And what is he gonna cost me? What's my risk to I'll tolerate? Like, can I really tolerate a kid who got an ego as big as a program? So when we talk about so when we talk about transfer portal, do you feel that goes hand in hand with the recruiting process? You think it simplifies the recruiting process, or like what are we looking at? Because I mean, of course, you know, the, of course, there's a lot of kids coming out of high school or athletes coming out of high school. I don't like to say kids, but <laughs> yeah. there's a lot, a lot of, there's a lot of you know young athletes coming out of high school, and you know, then we also have some of these. <laughs> I'm about to open up a can of worms. But then we also have some of these, I'll say, organizations or businesses saying that they can help guys get signed to programs by way of the portal and they have success records. Is it where are we at? So my man, look, nobody can make a team give you money. I don't care what you say. I don't care who you know, whatever. Like you can't even make a company give an athlete a job. But you get them an interview. Now, once you get the interview, the rest on you. I can, I can, I can get you in the front. Yeah. But the rest on you then, right? But I think the portal, truly, if we do the right thing on the front end, in in high school, we wouldn't need as many portal rec recruiting going on. Break that down. You said if we do the right thing at high school, we talking about developing the players, developing nah, just, the athletes, just, or just well that too. But recruiting, right? Um, you can't offer a kid in the portal. They don't care. It's no longer that game. No longer exists for them. If a kid is like offer hoarding in the portal, he in the portal for a reason. Still childish. So. As a coach recruiting, I got to go see like what the kid did at the school that, that he was pre previously at. Do he have any injuries? Why is he leaving? What his criminal record might be? Like, did anything happen? What's the relationship with the coach? Why did all that happen? But they don't happen at the high school level. Y'all mm. just say, yo, rival say he a five star. On three say he a five star plus. We got to get him. But the poor poor the time time come now y'all wanna do your your, your due diligence. Mm. But at that time it's like, well, I mean, we didn't do the due diligence for the high school kids. It's a lot of kid in the portal. Now he the he the same kid from 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 high school. Same same athlete. Yeah. You just look at it now, you know, what what was his production like? Do we have any previous previous injuries? And now you also gotta add on a layer of agents. The people you just mentioned. So now they got a relationship with these kids saying, yo, sign to me. I can get you into this school. Well, a lot of these programs, organizations, or whatever they are, agent-wise, are forcing some of these kids to transfer. Like, like they're can, forcing them to like, get in the portal type deal. Dude, you can have a kid who have, who have a great year. And they'll say, look, put your name in the portal, though. But make yourself listed and do not contact we just want to see which what your value is so that then we can negotiate your current school basically like strong strong arm your current school to give you more in nil money how does how does that work with the with the do with the do not contact and and if if that is put in place right you hop in the portal do the do not contact but then you go back to your other school have you seen situations where this has actually happened to where like players enter the portal and then their previous school signed them back, or their previous yeah. school took them back? A lot of them. Really? A lot, a lot of them do say, I'm entering, and then you'll see them slowly like, to disappear and go back to, 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 to their team. Because they, they're seeing the market like, yo, you ain't got no value. None. And then the team just takes them back with no issue? Oh, that's the other game. Because the team could take you back if you got value to, to that team. Or they can they can do a change of record as soon as you end the portal and be like, yo, you're on a different team. Your, your, your scholarship can also be gone. Oh, my goodness. So you're playing with fire. That's real fire for real. 
So if you don't have a value to the market and you didn't have one for the team you're leaving, it's a strong possibility that you might not have a spot when you try to come back. It's dangerous, bro. It's, just, it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous game, and everybody thinks they can play it because ESPN says this, and Joe Blow on Instagram says you can do this, and then your uncle said, "Hey, such and such that you played with in high school got five hundred thousand dollars. There's no way he get more than you." Well, situations are totally different. Totally different. Like I, I, I wish. Well, once the NCAA passes this transparency thing where you can see who actually getting what and the type of stuff that's going around and what companies are legit and which not, I think it might bring some correction to it. But it's still going to be people at home saying you should be doing more. You should be getting more. If they ain't going to play to play, play you, you might as well get more money. So we talking about transparency in terms of not seeing evaluation, but actually seeing real dollar amounts. Yes, because I get so annoyed when I keep hearing people talk about Kayan and Clark. They was like, bro, and Hun Angel, like, oh, they already made more money than they would make make in the, the WNBA. Okay, evaluation mm-hmm. and what they actually got can either be far off or super low. Because you might be valued at it's almost like a net worth. You, you, your net worth might be three hundred thousand, but you got that in your bank account, mm-hmm. and you got property. But they don't know that because they don't take account of all your assets. So they just saying like, "Oh, so that's worth three three point one million." I saw a dude tweet the other day. Uh, she already made three point one million. Where you got them dumb, dumb numbers from? Hmm. So like a valuation that sounds good is like projected what what would it be, but what's the formula? And who's saying that that formula is right? Because their follower count and their engagement, whatever, don't equal to the dollar amount because who putting the dollar amount on a follower joint? And and what are they what are they actually marketing? Because if I got to deal with Mercedes Benz or Canes or whoever state farm to like name the one that that they got what's the real value of my nil because if state farm gave me a million dollars and i'm going to come commercial who's actually buying state farm insurance in my demographic mm, that is true that's a good that's something that's not talked about because yeah no college kid is checking for state farm not you not you Doubtfully, you have insurance. Your institution right. has insurance on you, but you not you don't have no personal insurance other than like car insurance. No, you can't knock the business. The business doing anything, but as an athlete, like we got to start being realistic. Like you're asking for numbers that you can't, you can't like, you can't justify that. That was the thing for me because I was like, okay, as NIL is about to happen, yes, we know the professional athletes. You know, they're, they're going to get people to convert because these are people on the highest stage, the highest level. And we admire these people. We've seen them. And we know if they show up certain places, they have the ability to move the needle. No questions asked. Like if Kevin Durant says, I'm going to do a basketball signing at Wilson. All you got to do is buy the ball and I'm going to sign it. Yep. They're going to sell out the balls. Instantly. No questions asked. But if you get some of these athletes to show up in their own town, wherever their school is, People may come, they may not, they may not even know the, the the college had a basketball team, right? So that's that's been the part for me. I just it's just been a thing where people are living in this delusional world, like, and I and I think that's what the portal is, that's what the nil movement is. They need to get back to like reality, dude. You're not that good. Turn your tape on, okay. I go to your Instagram, you got 500K followers, cool. You got three posts. What am I investing in? What am I giving you? You got 500K followers, three posts, and I'm about to give you money to make a post for what? 
if we really want to sit at the table and talk big and talk big boy and you want to negotiate, you can't just ask. You got to bring some b behind that. Yo, my client or I'm looking for fifty thousand dollars for this post. The reason why I'm getting X amount of engagement on every po po post I make. Hey, look, I could show up to an event. I've already done my own micro events. They showing out about 200 people per event. We've charged fifty dollars at the door. We're clearing ten thousand dollars every event we doing. That's business. That's business. That's talking business. Yeah. Your activation can also increase this. Look, we'll put you all over our deal for fifty thousand dollars. We'll will we'll make a sponsor for a hundred thousand dollars. We'll, we'll make an official one. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Okay. But people ain't having these conversations. They're not having this conversation. They're like, my uncle said, my uncle said that if you gave me fifty thousand dollars for now, all I gotta do is make one post because he's seen it on on the on the shade room. The shade room said that the NIL athletes are making three million dollars. <laughs> like, like really? Yeah, the project. I mean, the projections will get you in trouble, though. Like, and 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 I'm with you on the delusion because it's even what four years in, three years in, four years in. NIL is still mystical. There's no, there's no structured way to say this is the way NIL is gonna go. And I think we kind of talked about this a little bit last time, but the NCAA is only going to allow for so long everybody else to get money before they say there's a lot of money coming through here yeah and we're not touching it that's a problem you know what would be crazy i thought about this like the other day it'd be crazy if the ncaa made the players opt in to a membership to take part in nil oh my goodness that would be crazy just nine bucks a month you know. Oh my you know. goodness. For for you to, you know, take part in this thing, you gotta pay a you know a little fee, like a little membership fee, like like a subscription, like Netflix. Like that would be crazy. I don't think it'd ever work, but it'd be crazy. Yeah, that'd be a serious like union type thing. They would try to band against some. But they but they would have to band against <clears throat> what? The NCAA. But the NCAA is not telling you you can't. They're saying to take part in this thing that we govern, mm. you pay this membership. Same with the school. They pay a membership, too, to be part of the NCAA. So if the athletes want to be considered as equal to the school, then you should follow the same rules, too. If y'all really want to play on on that level but the problem is they don't want to play on that level they want to look like they're on that level but they really want to stay at the kid level but they want to get the big the big boy that's tough that I, I think that's that's one of those things like even in like entrepreneurship like it's one thing to look like you running a business online right it looks good. You open up the Lambo, you're hopping in, you put the shades on, you put your blenders on. Yeah. You know, you drive it down it. Hey, grr, grr. yeah, that's the money calling. You know, like it looks good. Until you get smoked. Until, <laughs> <laughs> until you got to be out here and then somebody's like, oh, cool. Reggie, we would love for you to come over here to our school. Send us a quote. Mm -hmm. Send us a proposal. Do you have a contract? Cool. We're not going to use yours. We're going to use ours. Right? Do you, do you have a lawyer to go look, go look over ours? Do you have legal representation? You got legal counsel. Right? And our business looks good until you got a cold call. Until you actually have to learn what marketing means and Man, looks like. Man, tell everybody, tell you no, like back to back. No, no, no. And it will happen. No, no. And then you like, yo, there's no way. You, my product is good. It's the greatest thing in the world. There's no competition. That's the craziest thing that entrepreneurship stuff too is like, everybody thinks they're like a one of one in the market. 
Yes, it is true. <laughs> this has never been done. This is just the greatest thing in the world. It's never been been done. We we found a unicorn in the market. Did you really, bro? You're a CRM. <laughs> Relax. He just didn't know the name. <laughs> Relax. You just got a couple more bells and whistles. Yeah. You got some notifications that pop up and then you say honk honk. You did some but, add-ons. Yeah. That's cool. It's cool, man. But it ain't worth that. You think you made the best burger ever? Bro, that's just that's a Big Mac. You you put thousand dollar in dressing yeah. on there and you it's added right. an extra piece of bread. It's all right, brother. You relax. <laughs> but nah, man, I'd be I'd be really wanting um just things to be fair. It don't have to be equal, right? We ain't talk about making it equal. Just, yeah. just, just keep it fair, but it should be fair on both sides. As an athlete, we should get paid. Should. As a school, you should broker the deal. But I also think athletes know your actual value. Mm-hmm. Schools respect their, their, their value. Mm-hmm. Like, if I know I wouldn't get these views as a, as, as a school, if I know, yeah. I wouldn't get these eyeballs if we didn't bring this kid in. Yeah. Respect, respect. Yeah. But if I was going to do this with or without you, come on, man. You get what you get. Mm. Un- until you reach another level. Then you come back and renegotiate. It's almost like being a rookie. You come in mm. and you a seven-round draft pick. Yes, I know you think that you deserve to be a first round draft pick paid, but you weren't a first round draft pick. You were seven round. Okay, you bust your butt. You on the team for four years. Now you can go to the table and say, yo, for four years, this is what I've done. Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. You mm-hmm. know, and I think that I should do this based on my numbers comparable to the other guy who just signed in my position too at this rate. That's fair. I should get that. Yeah. But it takes four years. It's a four-year deal. Like, you ain't about to say, you, you, you know what? Cowboy, they give me my check. I'm going to the Eagles. <laughs> you know what? Eagles, they give me my check. I'm going to the Commanders. And then in four years, you want to really sell and negotiate. Negotiate and tell them what? That you quit three teams. You quit three teams. You was very unproductive on each one. That that's why you kept getting cut. So, do you really want to be at the next level and play professional sports, or do you want to pretend like you're at professional sports at this level? Like, if my mind that's is good. when I leave high school, I'm trying to go to a power five school because I'm trying to go to the league. Okay, well I can't wait till I get to the league to start doing league stuff. Mm. I should be doing league stuff right now. That's true. Which means knowing my numbers. Mm. Knowing what I'm doing. Knowing the value of this place that I'm at. Like everybody don't don't have the luxury of having the Caleb Williams pops or Eli Manning dad or Prime saying, nah, my boys ain't playing at these. But you ain't got that luxury. So you're going to go where you're going to go. Yeah. So that means if you get recruited from a school and they sign you, or if you say yes, I'm assigned to this school and you commit it, then go make the best of it. Not I'm going and yo, the soon as something don't go right, portal. Is this is this where athlete development plays the role? Because what you the way you just rolled that out, the way you rolled it out, and I was looking at I was listening to how you were really just breaking it down. When you're talking about knowing it sounded straight like entrepreneurship. You're talking about knowing your numbers. You're talking about having comparables. You're talking about basically doing a presentation, yeah. right? But wh- where where does the athlete development part play in this, in, in all of this? Man, so so I have a system, and I believe that it all starts with the mindset. You got to know what you actually want to do. Know who you are, right? Like, if I know I don't like a lot of attention, I shouldn't be trying to look at a school that's, like, att- attention-driven, like, if I just want to go play ball and do, do my thing and bounce, find a school that, that fits that. Then academically, yo, if I know I'm really not trying to be challenged that, that much and I really prefer to give me a trade, 
okay, go to a school where it's like low key and they have some opportunities to do some trade stuff, right? And then physically, if I know, okay, I'm five foot seven, not me, but if, if I'm five seven, 150, I don't think I want to go to Bama with guys who are in my same position, a mm -mm. hundred pounds more than me, right? Not saying that you can't play there. Yeah. But for you to catch up to where they are right now, mm -hmm. do you have that much time? It goes back to, to the mental. Do you have that much time mentally to sit and get to the level that's standard at Bama? Mm. Like, come on. And then career-wise, if I know I want to be, I want to get into business, I probably would want to find a school that is ranked in business. If I want to be an architect, I probably want to find a school that has architecture or have a relationship with this type of degree mm -hmm. or have an opportunity for me to get that. Like not just they look good in football or basketball or whatever sport. And I go here for this sport because now if I don't play, I'm going to ask myself in my dorm room in the middle of the night, yo, why am I here? Mm. Do I really want to play this sport? Man. Like, there's a, um, there's a, um, like a pro process called the, the cycle of change. Mm -hmm. Right? So, and this is how I can always tell who's going to quit. So in high school, you have uninformed optimism. You're like excited, bro. I can't wait till I go to the next, next level. It's going to be amazing. Right. Then you have the next stage is uh, informed is, is informed pe pe pessimism. Right. So mm -hmm. now you're like, no. Oh, yo, this take a lot. I ain't really feeling this. This this joint. This is like right after you sign. Mm. So so once you get ready to sign, you excited. You want to go take you sign. And then it's like, OK, all the all the hype gone. So. This is not cool. Then you get to camp. That's when you're in the valley of despair. Everybody quits right there. And they never get to the the informed optimism or the success because they quit at the valley of, of despair because one is too hard. I ain't getting what I thought, thought I was about to get. Coach lied to me. I really don't want to be out here because there's nothing for me here. Well, you took a visit. <laughs> so what did you do on your visit? So when it comes to developing an athlete, I don't fo fo focus solely on the physical piece. It's, really, it's literally mentally, ag um, academically, physically, and then career-wise. Don't come to me and tell me you want to be a chef and expect me to send you to a four-year school. Culinary school is over there. Mm -hmm. So do you want to chase your career or do you want to chase athletics? And then the moment you choose either one, all right, this is what comes with that. Mm. You won't become a chef until you finish playing this or I'm over here because you can't have both. Mm. So when do we give them the pros and cons like hey you said you wanted to be a chef you wanted to get an hvac you said your uncle was an electrician he told you to go get that because they're making bread well this school does doesn't offer that but i but i but i want to ball okay you can ball but just know you ain't about to do do um do this until you finish playing ball mm -hmm. so now you're over here and then you're doing this this ball thing and you ain't playing and then you say I don't know why I'm here. But then they fall into the valley of despair because now they got to go back again. The portal. Transfer, dog. Just transfer. And nobody asked you, do you really want to play football? Do you really want to keep playing? Because something tells me that you really don't want to play. Because now you're going to transfer again. And this is like somebody who likes sabotaging themselves. 
they'll transfer over and over and over again. Or they'll get in trouble multiple times just to get kicked off the team, mm. just to give it a reason on why they're not playing because they don't want to be a quitter. Mm. So they'll purposely wow. get kicked off the team or purposely tr transfer or purposely fail, fail the class and then say the only reason why I ain't playing is mm. because this. And then they go become a real estate agent or a chef. Like Christian, that's what you've been wanting to do. But nobody sat down and said, yo, if you choose this, this is how it looks. You choose this, this is how it looks. This is what could possibly go wrong. This is what possibly can go wrong. This can go right. This can go right. That's athlete development for me. Yeah. Because I don't want a kid to say, well, send me D1. If I send you D1 and you leave and go back home in six months, I got I, I got a 48% D1 success rate. I sent all my guys to D1. But how many of them at home in the fall? They all signed and they all at home. So you look good because you got all these logos. But if you go look at the 2022 class, go look at where the, where the top 15 are at right now. They're not at the school that they signed to. Top 15? Bro, oh. they're, they're none of them. They're not at the school that they signed to two years ago. But some high school is like, yo, we sent all our kids to the league, you know, to D1. We sent all our kids to Power of Five. Look at this signing day graphics. Man. So, so your kids signed to Texas A&M. Great. He's no longer there. And, 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 and I mean, you know, of course, there's the there's the aspect where, you know, somebody signs that this coach is expected to be there. That coach might have got fired or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the rest of them, I mean, everybody don't got their excuse. I mean, out the, of the 15, maybe two, that might have been, been the case. The most dangerous game is to sign to a school for a head coach. Mm. I play off of the lineman. I sign because y'all have the best O-line coach in the nation. The head coach leaves. I leave too. But I thought you signed because y'all had the best O-line coach. The O-line coach still here. That's so why you leaving. So you don't don't try to sell the world on you leaving because the head coach left. You leaving because you, you, you thought it was one thing and, and it wasn't. You didn't ask the right question at all. You signed to the school for the wrong reasons. You signed to the school because you went on a Saturday, big robbery week, <laughs> It's turn. <laughs> it is lit. Yeah, for sure. It's girls everywhere. <laughs> the nightlife turned up. And then you enroll in August. And you like, yo, this school is whack. Because all that stuff you saw as a visitor, you can never do because you're actually in the game now. Oh, wow. Or even worse, you just on the sideline. You, you on the sideline. That's even worse. So all the stuff that you were blinded by and enamored by, Man. you're no longer looking at it from the outside. You in it. You're in the game. You're in the mix. So you don't get that that luxury. Then. I probably get in trouble for saying saying this, but anyway, then you got the love when you came on a visit. Mm -hmm. You now are on the team. You don't play. So, so the girls who gave you love or the people who gave you love on a visit don't know you because you, you don't produce. So you don't get that same love. You're a nobody now. This is true. And the school you chose is now boring. So let me make a splash. Transfer. Now you get on the little graphics. Because they send the they they send no tweets to the people who post that. Oh, I, I always wondered how to. I was like, they say, yo, I'm, I'm getting the portal, dog. I'm getting the portal. 
boom, boom, and they get it. And some of them have access to it too, but for the most part, it's like, yo, I'm getting the portal, boom. You create the graph, create the graphic for you. We do the collab pose. Yeah, it turned up. And now, I'm the guy who in the portal now. Guy getting the, the love, getting, getting a little, getting, well, at least getting, getting that love. Yeah, and then I show up. Same work ethic. Mm. Mindset. I'm the, I'm the same guy in just new uniform. Mm. And then you fall in that same situation again. You, you ain't that productive, or you shut show up with another another guy who's just as good as you, and both y'all transfer. Yeah, both sides. Tough. What's so, the what, what's the solution? What's the solution here? You gotta bite the bullet. We gotta bring back the the, the, the competition. Like mm. you can't keep going from team to team to team in 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 little league, and you can't keep going from high school to high school. Like because it doesn't work like that in real life. Yeah. Like it's gonna take one school to put their foot down academically for the poor 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 those stuff to just stop. All one school got to do is say, you know what? No, you're going to you got to go take our math. We'll accept your credits, but you got to take our math. Then what? Oh, and this is after you already coming over and sign. Oh, then you're going to have. Oh, take our math. Mm. Or. We're we're a school, and this is why I don't think like a lot of people realize, realize too. There are some schools on a quarter system, some on a semester. That's true. So you show up, you were taking three hour classes. Now nah, this school's offering four hour classes. So you ain't even looking like oh, okay, what the credits are worth. You know, is this a one for one class? Is mm. this a like no? You you going straight to to the coach. The coach don't control the admissions. Coach don't know nothing about that over there. So he just like, yo, give me a transcript. Okay, you got 24 hours, you straight. Then you shut up and they're like, yeah, water polo. Hmm. Nah. Underwater basket <laughs> weaving. <laughs> what? Nah. <laughs> Is this a remedial English? Hmm. Nah. Uh, a 200 level what? Oh, okay. Look like junior college class to me. Yeah. That ain't gonna work at the university level. So when you talk about developing the athlete, the portal, recruiting, the NIL, as exciting as it is, it's too much going on. But in all reality, it's one thing that's 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 happening. The athletes are making decisions that they have no idea about because they never understood the system from jump. So now you in it. And it's almost like you at a club and it's packed. You got a birthday party over here. You got a fight that, that happened over, over there. They doing shots over here. The the, the, the bouncer cl on close the door and then somebody pulled the fire alarm. And all this happened in one spot. Now you're like, yo, what am I supposed to do? And I ain't check out no exits. So I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I'm just sitting here, just following the crowd. Wherever they go, I'm going to go. Because I walked in this building. It looked, it looked dope outside. I came inside. It's chaos. And then I don't know how to get out. So as soon as it happens, I'm going to just, whatever's like the move, I'm going with them. My grandfather used to always say, dude, whatever you go, always find the exits. Mm. That helped me out so much in, in school. Like, you in a club and, and they break out fighting. I know where the back door is at. I'm not going through the front door. Because everybody's going through the front door. Mm. I'm in my car and we going home. And later on, you hear about some wild stuff that happened, but you got out. So that's, that's my grandfather mm. giving me a skill set mentally that developed over time that I take with me and everything yeah. so now it's like what are we really giving these kids in high school so that when they do leave high school there's some common sense 
If I know I'm a freshman, I, I shouldn't even expect to play. That is true. You gotta, you gotta be that dude. It'd be crazy for me to even think I should play as a freshman. Yeah, because you gotta learn. You gotta learn the playbook. You got. I mean, for one, you have to go in there. Just like to your point earlier, if I want to get to the pros, I have to be doing pro stuff already. To be a freshman that's playing, you should already be doing. You, to be a freshman, yeah, a freshman that's playing coming in, you should already have the pro stuff. You should already know your weaknesses, and you should already be working on those. And the first person that comes to mind for me when I think of a freshman that played was Maurice Claret. Because Maurice Claret was averaging like six yards a carry. A, a dog. A problem. And he played freshman year. I mean, the whole. And he understood the game. Mm -hmm. He was physically ready. Mm -hmm. Mentally, he was off. Mm. And he and now you know I even you know I, I, I watch it is what it is yeah. and, he, and he talks about that often because he wants other guys to understand like don't do this don't do that. like and he uses his platform to really focus and hone yeah. in on that love it but I love what he's doing too because he, he's telling the truth I thought I could have done this isn't this you thought you didn't have nobody around you to like give you like the real. Because pe pe people just enjoyed what you, what, you, what you did physically. Mm. And they said that you have not on people who was giving me that advice. When you got into the mix, where were they? All right? And I, ju and I just want us to really, like, enjoy the new wave. Innovation is always something that I take pride in because I like doing stuff that's new and re refreshing. But you can't just take everything that's new and apply it mm. learn it first mm. learn it but the issue is people didn't learn right now so when a new thing came they just doing what they did right right now i'm gonna do, I'll do that too i didn't learn the, the recruiting process i didn't learn about test taking i didn't learn about transcripts i didn't learn what the public school system really was i didn't learn what different between public public and and private, I, I didn't learn. So when the new thing come, cool. He said, I can just do this. Mm. Michael Ty says on something the other day on, on church, he said, um, it don't matter what I say on this stage. If all you take is what I said, you'll never get fed. That's a word. Like you should be like, oh, okay, Reggie said this and this. Mike Ty said this and this. Jonathan said this and this. Let me go look this up. Mm -hmm. No, we just, well, he said I can get an NIL bag. He said I can transfer. He had no understanding of the NCAA <laughs> rule book. Didn't know the rules of NIL. <laughs> Ain't signed nobody to no NIL deal. Can't even define what a collective is. Can't define what a collective is. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm laughing because dudes who say they got kids, NIL deals, you turn around and you see these are discount codes. These are affiliate links. These are opportunities that's going to require this kid to have a brand and have some traction to even reap the benefits. There's no tracking. You don't teach them how to look at their dashboard. You don't teach them how to do SEO. You just say, hey, bro, sign up to my, pro 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 my, my program. And... Here's a discount code, and I'm going to make you a graphic. So I'm going to then use your NIL. I didn't give you nothing but a discount code. Mm. And, 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 and when I saw it, when it first happened, I was just like, this is, this is backwards. Big time backwards. They get to use your NIL, and you get to do what? Right, but you don't learn in high school. Seven on sevens, these trainers, they posting you all online because you a five star and they just doing what? Giving you a few sessions for free? And they posting you, they they using your likeness, they're using your name to bring in more kids. You you on their graphics, you on their flyers, you on the seven on seven circuits and these boys are getting these TV deals and you're mad at the NCAA 
and you fussing at the cottage to, to get your money, but you just did all this for, for free. You did all this for free. And for those who will argue and say, well, I did it for free, but I did that so I can get to college. Well, you're killing the argument in college because the college is saying, well, you're doing this to get to the league. So why can't you take that, that, that same approach that you did in high school? Mm. Because somebody is telling you, oh, at this level, boom, boom, boom. But all these AAU teams are getting sponsor sponsorship deals, but who's actually getting sponsored? The team, not the players. So we're teaching this in high school. Just join this team, be a part, part, part of this Nike deal. You get all the gear. The organization gets the, the endorsement. You, you just get to play. But somebody said, oh, college kids can now get paid. Somebody said, somebody said that, that they can all get paid. So when we talk about the, the, I'm developing an athlete, man, like it's not just make them faster. And it's not just putting people in front of them just to say you're doing something. Like, I'm going to have a financial guy come and tell you all about finances. And then the whole time he's telling you about how he messed up his finances. And he leaves. <laughs> What'd you learn? Follow him on Instagram. He told you he messed his bread up. He told you he... He up now, and he tells you this is what he do for a career, and then he wished he would have learned this when he was in college because he was right here in your seats, and he really want to change the next generation because he really wants you to think more. So if I were you, I would start saving money. Thank y'all. I'm going to get in trouble now. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Because, man, like, oh, like we got to get, we got to stop playing, right? Like, we're, 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 we got to stop joking around, and we got to stop just doing stuff because it look good. Like, now, if you're giving out real game and you like saying, yo, get your 401k with, with, with your job because your job actually matches what you put in, meaning for every dollar you put in, they put in a dollar, read your contract, boom, get benefits, get an HSA account, boom. Okay. Now, if they don't listen. That's on them. For sure. For sure. That is on them. But you can't go in that thing and say, yo, you know, when I was in your shoes. I would have. I, I was just the guy who was just who was just here. And then they're like, yeah, bro, me too. And then, then you say, I blew all my money. Now, I'm smarter with my money. Doing what? Yeah, where is it going? Like, tell, tell <laughs> how, us. Where? How? Like, come, come on, man. Because the end that is teaching these, these kids weird stuff. Don't go to school because the professor who teaches you business don't run his own business. That part. Well, somebody got to teach. <laughs> so everybody has to run a big business in order to teach it. So college has been around for hundreds of years because it's fake. That's a good point. Cause that, I mean, cause that's where I come from. I come, I come from the train of thought. I'm not gonna say college is bad, but I come from the train of thought that there are two different variations, right? So somebody doesn't necessarily have to have a business to be able to teach about business. Will it help? Yes, but there's book knowledge, and then there's experience knowledge. Yeah. Right. So you can share experiences, real situations, what happened in your business that you built, going through the process. Right. I learned when I had my business, I didn't pay taxes. So now I'm realizing that I want to pay my taxes, make sure the IRS is good. I don't get no fines over here. The book says that, you know, we want to just start to put money to the side just because I don't know why I'm putting it to the side. But I know that the book says yeah. I should put. So, you know, you can't I believe that you can come from either theory. Right. But I lean more so to the experience side. I'm going to give somebody a little bit more credibility if they have experience, because I feel they can give me if I ask a question in Q&A, I'm like, hey, uh, what would you do in this situation? You may or may not have the answer in the book. It might not be the second edition, so they might not have got there yet. Yeah. The experienced person, they might be able to give you a little bit more well-rounded answer. Yeah. 
But I think we, that's kind of where we we like misconstrued the definitions of business and entrepreneurship. Because mm. the entrepreneur is going to try it, fail, try it, fail. Yeah. And then eventually he'll figure out like, yo, I, I, I need systems. Yeah. I sure. need this, that, that, that. So online, all the gurus online are saying, hey, let me teach you the shortcut to business. No, I'm teaching you how to bypass all the mistakes I made in entrepreneurship, and let me show you how to get to the, to the back. Cool. Mm -hmm. System-wise, it's crazy, crazy, right? And like, even think about the rich dad, poor, poor dad, the um, the um, the whole quadrant joint. Mm -hmm. you got an employee, he's self-employed. Everybody's teaching from the, the, on the left hand side. Go either go to school and get a job, or don't go go, go to school and start a business. Hmm. It ain't it ain't until you really like get over into that business side where you now you got systems and people that that work for you, which you need to go to school to learn how to do HR, hiring, policies, SOPs. That's big. You ain't just gonna learn that from experience. That is true. <laughs> that either or you can find other, you know, or other people who maybe Bit, major in that area yeah. or their business is in that area. Then, yeah, but yeah, you're right. And, and you're then right. that's when you realize, yo, college is not just for me to go learn. It's to go meet people. Mm. Because if, if Sally Sue bought the major in, in HR, well, you know what? I can hire her to run my HR department. It's true. He's majoring in marketing. You know what? Because getting a marketing degree won't. There's no use for it unless you apply it to an organization or some kind. Like that, just getting your, that's definitely just getting your degree don't don't mean you about to get money. You gotta apply to somebody. True. So you know what? I'm, I'm about to get marketing. Okay. Communications. Cool. Bad. So you kind of like start building out your team from your friends. That's true. And then it's like okay, my teacher may not have known how to put things together. But we know how to communicate. Because if I say a party happening at the union, I'm gonna send out one one text message. It's going around the whole school in 20 minutes. So we know how to put it For all together, sure. right? So that's kind of where I, I I want us to really get them to is like developing them and like showcasing recruiting isn't about the offer because mm -hmm. you can get recruited anywhere. Anybody can recruit you, and you can't base it solely off of, well, they won a national championship five years ago. And you can't base it on, well, they facilities like this. And you can't base it on, well, because if everybody offering you a full ride, then it's, just, it's not about money. Mm -hmm. So if everybody giving you a full ride, then that means you go to school for free. Don't matter, right? So it's like, okay, what, what am I getting out of this? For sure. And that's the career side. And as a coach, a recruiter, a scout, I gotta know what this kid likes. I gotta know what this kid is interested in. What do you wanna major in and why? Because then that also helps me with directing them to the right per 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 person for NIL. Prime example, Coach Don Staley and that Boom. recruit that she got. I, I don't know her, I, I was looking at it and her name is escaping me. The young lady, the young, I'm, I'm going to find a name. I'm going to get it because I just want to put some respect on it. Yeah, because she a baller too mm -hmm. from, from what I saw on a thing. I don't know her name either. Don Staley gets recruit and creates major. What is this young lady's name? We want to get her. Coach Don Staley had South Carolina create a major in environmental engineering to get 6-2 forward. Joyce Edwards to commit to Joyce. SC yeah. has a 5.0 GPA and average 31 <laughs> points and 13 rebounds. Baller. Academic baller. And know what she wants to do um, career-wise. So from Coach Dawn, okay, check, check, check. Now all I got to do is do the physical part. Because mm. all that stuff is done. That is true. She ready. All I got to do is get in the, I'm in the game. I already got her degree laid out. Cool. 
academic, laid, 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 laid out. Mentally, I understand where her mindset is at. Is at so I'm a, I'm a continue to feed that. So I gotta make sure she gonna be straight. So physically, we gonna run drills. We gonna practice. We, we gonna play games, and we just hit all four joints. We just won. But that's a real coach. That's it. That is a real coach. And I was talking with somebody about this the other day, and we we're talking about how. Or it might have been you. <laughs> we're talking about how, we're talking about how how players can yell at players because they get frustrated that they don't understand what's happening. But then on the other side, it's well, you can't be mad at them. You it's not you're not mad at them because they're not playing how they're supposed to play. You should mad at yourself because you're just not coaching. Coach. Yeah. You just do your job. People don't understand coaching is not just a title. Like if I'm coaching you, I'm like I'm like I'm assisting, I'm I'm helping. Yeah. Like I see I'm drawing these plays and you looking in the sky like <laughs> you stressed out like bro, I don't know what's going on. Because we forget that coaching and teaching are all the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Cuz a, te- a teacher in class is going to be like, "Yeah, guys, X um, X squared plus B squared equals C squared. And he's you just doing the thing like looking lost. A good teacher going to be like, yo, see me out of there. I'm out of the class. Mm-hmm. A good teacher. Yeah. So a good coach should be like, yo, we we did the film study. We did the whiteboard. We did the on field, on court. Still ain't got it. What's going on? Then that's the part where you really got a coach because then you have to identify how does this guy or gal best learn? How do they learn? Are they kinetic? Or are they visual? Or are they auditory? Like, how can I break it down for them? But if you ain't taking that time or you don't want to take the time, then you're not going to get the maximum result of that investment. Did you hear what Matt Rule said about when he was sitting with Belichick? Uh-uh. He said Belichick spoke for four and a half hours on football. And he, 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 he was like, I was so embarrassed because he was just making the complex stuff simple because guys like that, they learned the game, they ingested it, and they can bring it back out to where it makes sense. All these other guys are trying to speed through to become the, the next best coach and don't know how to coach. They know how to regurgitate what they heard at, at a clinic. Let's do these drills. Let's do these drills. Why are we doing these drills? All right, cool. Look, let's let's do these cone joints. Why are we doing that? You can't even relate the drills to your scheme because you don't understand the scheme. Because when you was a player, you didn't read the playbook well. When you didn't play, you, you don't understand the X's and O's. So what's the philosophy of what y'all actually running? And, and you out here recruiting these kids who got these star rankings, but you 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 know they play well, but they didn't play well in this system. You don't know that because you don't know the system. As a, as a coach, you don't know the system. So you can't even teach it and you can't even recruit for it because you don't know what you're looking for because you don't know what's on the paper. You know, hey, you guard him. When we call time out, hey, look, what are y'all seeing out there? <laughs> Bro, I think that's the craziest concept to ask a player in the middle of a game who you know don't know what's going on throughout the week. What y'all seeing out, out, out there? Man, coach, I think they running man, but they also running a little zone too. Okay, are they running the zone to the field of the boundary? Huh? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and it's just it gets weird. Like like the huddle gets weird. It's just like, yo, what are y'all seeing? And they like, man, I, I'm 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 seeing every everything, coach. I think I think they ain't cover too. We didn't study film all week. We ain't never discussed them running in cover two. So how do you see a cover two? Did they just magically just pull this out the hat today? Or do you think that cover two just means two high safeties? 
Did you see what they did pre-snap? Did you see what they did post-snap? Did they roll down? Did, did they play man when they reach a certain level? In the dis- no, you don't know that because I didn't teach you that because all I said was, you run seven, ah, 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 you, you stink and you, <laughs> you're, you're a skills coach. <laughs> you teach your drills, dog. And, and that's why these kids transfer too, though. Because they're not being taught. Because if they was getting taught, nobody nobody runs from inf- information. Mm. Like, ain't nobody running from good info. Mm. Especially if it's going to help them get to where their goal is. <laughs> ain't nobody running from good information, though. Mm. Now, they might be running from accountability. Because you know what you want. And you're a question. And they may, maybe they can't live, live up to what you expected. But these kids not dumb, bro. They understand when when you blowing smoke. Mm. So you asking for stuff that they know for a fact you don't even know about. We doing all these drills. We doing all these drills. You didn't buy the boxing gloves. You didn't buy the basketball basketball rim. You didn't buy a samurai sword, some nunchucks, and you. Got us going crazy in the gym. You ain't seen that before. Bruh, just go on YouTube. You ain't seen this before. No way. For football. Bruh. No way. Man, these boys bringing out the works. No. First of all, what I saw, what I saw the other day for Ole Miss football to have a dunk contest for their football players. Yeah, man. I said, y'all have lost your complete... These athletes might be pure athletes, but that is the fastest way for somebody to end a career. Going up there doing, yeah, the coach has told you if you're a football player, don't go and play in open gym. They don't say that anymore. No way. Ever since the Travis Hunter? I I don't know about Travis. I've seen Travis, well, at least his first year, I've seen him. He was lit. He but was you know, out there just. It's the it's the we respect dual sport athletes, blah 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 blah. That that whole wave. That's these new guys. I love them though, because they're bringing like innovation to it and letting the boys be. But you gotta be smart too, too though. You gotta be smart, man. That's not yeah. like hype is not development. Mm. Like we can have fun all day. But some of them kids who, who was like, ah, oh, let's go, is going to the poor, 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 poor tomorrow. Because that didn't keep them. It's not retention. That's not a retention thing. That's mm. that's you. You want, We didn't ask to have a dunk contest. That's a creative idea. Walked <laughs> out in real time, not thought out. Just walked out. Who's Who sat down and said, you, you, you know what, coach? We should have a dunk contest and a hot dog eating kind of contest, too. What does that do? I don't. What what does what was the return on that? That's my question. Like, what did you really think you was gonna get out of that? Like, I mean, a cool on campus event to bring the bring the fans out, but UCF. I think UCF did a, a fastest night, so they raced. I had a, I'm at the end. Of, I'm in the day, screen thing. The boys doing everything but football. <laughs> That's that's crazy. I respect everybody's ideas and stuff, and I'll never say it's wrong. But we got to go back to the foundational stuff if we if we're talking about retention. These kids are leaving because they feel like it's a joke. Mm. Bro, my mama is hungry. For real. I'm trying to get to the league, and you got me in here doing dunks. Say, bro. I'm out. Y'all, y'all don't take this serious, serious. I'm serious enough. Like, I'm one year away from giving this all up or changing my whole family life. Mm. I don't have time for that, for that. And the ones who talking like that are usually your best players. You don't have time to pussyfoot around. Mm. Bro, I'm trying to now. If y'all did all of this, you know, top of spring, <laughs> cool. Top of spring when y'all first get into the path, y'all getting acclimated. They made it, but no, oh, not yeah, yeah, not yeah. spring game day. 
know. You do that when when it's a it's a draw. Camaraderie. Let's yeah, get the people know, out. Let them see. Tug of war. You know, yeah. let's get it in. And after that, after that, it's, it's game time. You gotta get to it. Yeah. Because now I need to see where I fit at. Like I ain't playing flag football. <laughs> but nah, man, I I I respect them though. But um, like I like to talk about this all day. These are just my thoughts. You know, my opinions are mine. I ain't no head coach. For sure. For sure. <laughs> well, well, here's where I, what, what's what's your prediction? Five years from now, do we see athletes being more holistically developed? Do we see NIL just exploding in the worst way possible? Like, we probably gonna come back again and talk about this some more. But like, what do you, what 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 do you see five years from now? So we can put a bow on it. In five years, I see NIL being the premier focus of every school, mm. and this will be the thing to break the big schools away from the NCAA. Because once you say, all right, well, we, we, we control the recruiting, we control the academics, we control the deals, we control the money. I mean, we, we schedule our own games. We can play whoever we want to play. The bowl games are based on money and sponsorships. Spon- 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 so if a kid got a deal with, with Nissan and it's three of them, I don't think they can – Go get a bowl game that's forward. Mm. So we talking, and that's probably like wrong as hell. But just thinking, your team will start to get deals that will contra- contradict some of these bowl games. Mm. So either we start cut, cut, cutting these kids into the into the money, or the bowl games go away. Because the bowl games only benefit the people who sponsor the bowl games. It don't benefit the NCAA. Mm. So who who would play in the bowl, bowl, bowl games? Your FCS schools, your, your D2s. That's who needs to be governed by the NCAA. Not not the D1s, the, the power schools. They good. They got the system together. They straight. The NCAA need to govern the other people, the D2, the D3s, and, and all of them. Because they the only ones who playing this stuff for fun. The country club is over here. The Fortune 500 is over here. So we, we need to look, look at that. So in five years, there there will be a Division One system, but it won't be what the system is right now. Mm. This system right now is, is chaotic because you got some schools with, with, with 100 million and you got some schools can't get $100. So why are we in the same pot? Mm. And why if the conference is usually four, five teams best, why do everybody have to share the money because we all part of the same conference? Because ain't nobody going to watch ESPN to go watch the other people. Mm. Name any power five. The bottom three, ain't nobody watching them games. Unless they're playing the top four. So why do the top four have to split bread between everybody else? And then we've already killed the whole uh, bus schools. So proximity. That's already did with UCLA and UC, USC going to the Big Ten. They ain't about to drive no buses. So we already killed the whole got to be close mm. to, to being a conference. So now what? Conference is going to be irrelevant. You gonna have one. And they already talked about Biden. You gonna have one mega joint, and then it be everybody else. One mega joint, about 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 else. NFL, UFL, XFL, arena. So look mm. at so look at arena like it's like D three. The the USFL was your D twos. Your XFL was your D1, FCS joint, the HBCUs, and then those two happen to, to merge and create one thing. But the inner NFL is still the NFL. Mm. And you can say, like, all the European people, like the NAIA, they play great ball. 
But don't nobody know like they really exist. Okay. So in five years, bro, everything is going to be negotiated. Everything. Players can get cut. Players can return. Players can go from one team to the next team. Same, same week. But I don't think they really want that, though. The players don't really want that lifestyle. Oh, no, they're not ready for that. It sounds good. It sounds good until <laughs> you can't get a 10-day contract. You pull up like, you know what, coach? I'm, I'm tired, man. I'm transferring. You ain't about to leave from Florida and go to Mississippi. Monday, playing on Saturday. Because we haven't developed them yet to even learn how to read, 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 read a playbook. So you ain't about to grasp the playbook in three days when you can't get it in three weeks in fall camp. So, I could talk hype at that, that, that all day long. It's funny. But uh, seriously, though, I think the money will overtake what college sports is. And it's going to be controlled by certain, 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 certain schools. Man. Okay, man. 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 Every time, it's like, you just blow my mind, man. You just mess me up. <laughs> you mess me up. But, man, that's going uh, to that's, that's gonna wrap it up, man, for this go-round. The second, the second go-round, man. Uh, here with Beyond the Bar. If y'all enjoyed this content, man, first of all, tap in with Reggie. Reggie, let people know where they can find you, follow you, connect with you. Yeah, man, all my social media is Reggie Calhoun Jr. So it's Reggie Calhoun Jr. on everything. IG, Twitter, LinkedIn, the whole nine. For sure, yeah. We'll, we'll have all that down in the show yeah, notes. Put and y'all, make sure you follow follow the podcast on Instagram at Beyond the Ball Podcast. It's plain and simple. But I'm Jonathan Jones. This has been Beyond the Ball where we help student-athletes succeed beyond their degrees.